Hello and welcome to Thought Provoking Tech. I'm Zach and in today's video, I'm going to be doing a tutorial on how to install Parsec on a Raspberry Pi 3. So the Pi 3 is not required for this project, but it is highly recommended to go ahead and use the 3. Uh, some people have utilized the 2 for playing Parsec, but just go ahead and if you haven't already purchased the Pi and don't have one laying around, go ahead and make sure you just grab the 3 for this project, as you'll get a little bit better experience out of the 3 than you would the 2. Uh, and if you don't already know a little bit about Parsec, Parsec will let you uh, stream games from a computer that is local or a cloud uh, PC. So you can play PC games pretty much wherever you go and all you got to do is bring your Pi and of course the accessories such as your keyboard and mouse uh, that you'll be utilizing to play those games. So without further delay, let's go ahead and jump right to it. Alright, so to kickstart this project, head over to raspberrypi.org forward slash downloads and you'll be brought to this page right here. For the easiest experience, go ahead and just download the Noobs application. So right here you'll see uh, the Noobs. And you want to download the zip file right here in the first category. So go ahead and download that zip. It will be a fairly large file, it's about one point one and a half gigs. Uh, so depending on your internet speeds, it will take a little while to download. I've already pre-downloaded that, so I'm just going to go ahead and jump to the next part uh, real quick. All right, so for this part of the project, you're going to need a couple things, and that's going to depend on what your computer has uh, in terms of hardware for reading SD cards. Uh, for 100%, you know you're going to need a micro SD card because that's what the Pi 3 uses. Uh, you may need a SD card to micro SD adapter. These come with most micro SDs that you buy nowadays. Um, so if your computer has an SD card reader, you will need that to adjust for that. Most computers don't have micro SD card readers, but there's a couple uh, more, especially like on the, the tablet and super convertible. Sometimes they'll use actually a micro SD instead of full size SD. Uh, if your computer does not have an SD card reader of any sort, you can just purchase a uh, USB to uh, micro a uh, USB slash SD card reader. This is a Transcend uh, model. Uh, works great. It's USB 3.0, so it has great transfer speeds uh, if you're going to use that for like pictures and other things outside of just transferring uh, your Raspbian image over to the, the card. So go ahead and insert your SD card, and then we'll take off from there. All right, so I've inserted my uh, SD card here, and you can see that it's called Boot because I had previously used it as a boot drive for a Raspberry Pi. What we're going to do to start things off is just format that just in case you did use it previously. I formatted mine a while ago, um, but I'm just going to go ahead and do it again. Uh, if you had anything else on there, it's just a good habit to format. Even though it might already be a FAT32 form, uh, file system, just go ahead and format it just so that you know that only the latest files are there and it will reduce any issues you might have in the future. So go ahead and make sure you do have FAT32 as your file system. And you can name it anything if you want to. I name all of the ones I use as boot drives to boot. I just so I know in the future that I kind of have an idea of what it was used for. Uh, so I don't erase important data, you know, if I used it for pictures or something along those lines. So all you got to do is a quick format. That's plenty fine. Go ahead and click start. And it'll format fairly quickly. Now over here on the downloads folder, go ahead and double click on the zip file that we have. You can close that dialog prompt and double click on the boot drive over here. The easiest way is just to hit Control A. That'll select everything inside that zip folder. It's the easiest way to make sure you get it. You can drag and select and stuff, uh, but Control A make sure you don't miss anything. Make sure that you don't miss anything because it selects everything inside of that uh, zip file. So hit, hit Control A, then Control C to copy, or you can right click and hit, uh, hit copy. But it'll bring up that anno annoying little prompt because everything's inside of a zip folder. So I just recommend hitting Control A to select everything and then Control C to copy. Then over here you can right click and paste or you can hit Control V to paste. So go ahead and do that and it'll take a little while to copy because it is, like I said, uh, 1.5 gigabytes roughly. So it'll take a little while to transfer depending on the speed of your SD card and uh, the reader you're using um, to kind of interfere, uh, to transfer the data from your computer to the micro SD card that you have. So we'll take it back, uh, pick up from here when th that gets done transferring. So after you have finished copying the files, remove your micro SD card from your uh, writer and install it into the SD card slot, which is right underneath the uh, far end of the Pi. Uh, you'll see a little uh, header there that reads display. You'll insert your SD card, micro SD card with the pins facing up uh, towards the board. So you'll see the little uh, 
the little gold pins on your micro SD card just have those facing up towards the uh, Raspberry Pi board. And uh, there you go. So you'll ha now have your micro SD card uh, installed onto your Raspberry Pi. You have noobs written onto that micro SD card. And now you're just going to need your uh, HDMI cable and a power cable to go ahead and get power and video out from your Raspberry Pi. So go ahead and do that and we'll pick up to the next step. All right, so I apologize for the poor image quality uh, in this part of the video. I have a USB capture device, but for some reason it's not working. So I am having to fall back to using a webcam to capture this. So I do apologize. Hopefully you can read along. Otherwise I'll try to be as descriptive as possible. But if everything went fine with the copy over to the SD card, the moment you power on your Pi and plug it into your display, you should get a screen that looks just like this. And that's why Noobs is so great because it is super simple and it's for Noobs. Uh, the It actually stands for something else like new out of box software, something like that. I believe that's what it stands for. But go ahead and we're going to choose Raspbian. Just so just click the checkbox there and then click install. It's going to take about four and a half gigabytes or just a little over four gigabytes, I guess, to install uh, Raspbian on your Raspberry Pi. So you're going to want a SD card that's probably about eight gigabytes. Um, I'm running off of a 16 gigabyte SD card, uh, but you don't have to have a 16 gig SD card. Eight gigabytes would be plenty uh, since all we're going to be doing is just installing parts that can use it kind of as a thin client of sorts. So this will take a little while to install. So go ahead and let it run, and then we'll take back up, uh, pick back up when uh, the installation has finished. All right. So the Raspbian OS has finally finished installing. Uh, so I'm just going to click OK to uh, dismiss that message, and it's going to go ahead and reboot, and it'll boot into uh, the desktop mode here in a second. All right. So I got my uh, USB video capture device to work. Um, so I'll, the quality should be a little bit better now. So what we're going to do now is run through a couple uh, housekeeping uh, tasks for the uh, Raspberry Pi just to get everything set up on the back end before we actually install Parsec. So what you're going to do is click on the Raspberry icon in the top and then click on Preferences or hover over Preferences and then click on Raspberry Pi Configuration. After that comes up, the first thing you want to do is you're definitely going to want to change that password. Uh, don't even argue on that point, just change the password from the default. Uh, you'll thank me later. <laughs> um, you can leave the host name as Raspberry Pi unless you end up with a lot, a lot of Raspberry Pis on your network. Um, that'll be fine. It'll be easy to find it and everything like that. And you can leave the login user as Pi as long as you change the password. Going from there, uh, you might need to set your res resolution. So if it's not 19 by 20 by 1080, you have to click on that and change your resolution. Uh, Overscan mode. If you have black bars. Um, that it, uh, by default, overscan mode is enabled. Uh, so if you have black bars around the edges, you can disable that and it should fill your full screen. Uh, I always have to disable it, but it's better for them to err on the side of caution and put a black bar around your screen rather than have some elements of the screen unclickable because it, it extends past the boundaries of the screen. Uh, going from there, you might need to set your local, localization such as your time zone so your time's right. You might choose the right keyboard. And, and so on and so forth. But the biggest thing that you're definitely not to go to is go to performance and increase the GPU memory from 64 uh, to at least 128. All right, one final point on networking. I have my Pi connected via an Ethernet cable, so it's hardwired over my network. Uh, that is your best bet, but if you can't get an Ethernet cable to where you're putting your Pi, um, and since it's so small on mobile, it's likely to be something you're gonna be putting away from your network uh, more than likely. Uh, because you probably have that set up where your desktop or something along those lines is. Uh, but do not use the built-in Wi-Fi. Pretty much any Wi-Fi USB adapter that you're going to pick up is way better. I've had great link with the TP-Link um, Wi-Fi adapter. I've tested on Gigabit Network and I've tested against uh, USB adapters four to five times its cost and it's been neck to neck with them. So it's not the best in the world, but it's a, a very good experience overall. And also uh, use your five gigahertz um, Wi-Fi if you're gonna plan on using uh, Wi-Fi for your partial streaming. So what we wanna do now is uh, navigate to the parsec.tv uh, website. So just open your browser. Uh, it looks like kind of the old school uh, little world icon. And we're just going to go to parsec.tv. And uh, I guess you could have typed forward slash download. 
I think that is the direct link. But we're just going to go ahead and uh, just click on the download now button. Scroll down a little bit and you should see the Raspberry Pi 3 edition. Uh, it does say Pi 3, but it will work on a Pi 2. But like it kind of said at the beginning, you just go ahead and uh, there'll be a message at the bottom that asks that you can't see because it's cut off because of my banner. But uh, it says this type of file can harm your computer. Do you want to keep uh, parsec-rpi.db uh, anyway? You're going to say keep. It's going to download that. And then click on that. It's going to be on the bottom of the bar. Uh, then it'll be, it's, it's going to say opening. And then someone asks if you're going to install that. Uh, click yes. And it'll go ahead and go through the installation uh, process. So now it's asking for your identity. Uh, I, like I said earlier, you can leave that your main identity as Pi, but uh, change your password. So now you're going to enter your pa password that you ch edited, entered earlier. After entering your password, it will uh, finish installing and uh, start running the Parsec application. All right, one quick bit, if you're planning on using Xbox controllers uh, with your Pi and Parsec, you'll just need to enter, uh, open the command prompt, uh, or I think they call it something different in Pi, I'm just used to Windows. Terminal, right, right, terminal. So open your terminal, type in sudo, S-U-D-O, Space apt dash get apt git space install space xbox drv hit enter it'll now go ahead and get the files and go ahead and install the drivers for the xbox controller so now you'll be able to play with the wired controllers inside of parsec so once that gets done we'll go ahead and open up Parsec and get the account set up so that you can uh, utilize Parsec while on the go. You can go ahead and uh, leave this terminal open, but I always like when I'm done with something to close the terminal uh, or the command prompt uh, as it's commonly called in Windows and open a new fresh one just so I have a fresh clipboard in front of me. All right, so we're now ready for the final step in this uh, project. Uh, open up your terminal and all you have to do is just type Parsec, all lowercase. Uh, if you type Parsec with a capital P, it won't work. So just type Parsec with all lowercase. It's going to ask for your email address and then your password. When you get to the password field, it's not going to display characters like an asterisk or anything like that for, to represent the characters that you're entering. It's just going to be a blank field. So just keep that in mind. Don't get frustrated. Like I'm entering data, but nothing's showing up. Uh, it's not it's, it's not going to show up anything, but it is reading your, your data that you're entering. So just enter your username address, hit enter, and then it'll ask for your password, hit enter that, and then hit enter. All right, so after entering your username and password, it's gonna ask if you wanna save your password. I personally recommend hitting no here, especially if you're gonna be bringing your Pi outside of your house and like going back and forth to the campus or back to forth to uh, work or a friend's house or whatever, any chance that you could lose it along the way or leave it behind on an accident, I would just recommend, recommend just hitting no to here. It only takes a whole 20 seconds to enter your email address and your password. Even if you have like a randomly generated one from your password manager, it doesn't really take that long. Uh, so I just recommend hitting no here and just entering your username and uh, your email address and your password every time you launch up the Parsec app. Now it's gonna, after you enter yes or no, uh, then it's gonna enter, uh, load a list of all the active servers that are online right now. I wanna connect to number two, so all I have to enter is it, 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 type in number two and then click enter. It's gonna display uh, some variables as it's actually connecting. And then it's gonna actually launch into uh, the re remote uh, client that is streaming. So I'm actually connected right now to a paper space instance based in New York. Uh, for reference, I'm in the center of the U.S. pretty much in the in, in central U.S. Uh, and I'm connected to the New York uh, data center uh, with paper space. I've tested this pretty heavily on the uh, um, on the desktop side uh, and had great experience. So uh, and I haven't used the Pi app much. I've done a little bit of initial testing before I made this video. Uh, but I will be doing more extensive testing and probably following up some videos like this, but it's a full desktop experience. The mouse is very responsive, even though the data centers, you know, it's just, just as responsive really as if the mouse was sitting right in front of me. Um, or, you know, if, if I was connecting with my, uh, you know, my computer and using Parsec, uh, to access this. Uh, so now I can get on steam, load up a game just like I could normally, 
uh, on a Windows computer, but I'm doing it all through a Pi. Uh, and I just saw earlier um, that the little the little yellow lightning bolt. I wanted to cover that real quick before I uh, forgot. But uh, that means your Pi isn't getting a, enough. Uh, it's a, I think it means it's actually undervolted. Uh, which likely means you probably need to put a better power supply. I just saw a display again right now. Uh, so that that means you probably want to put a better uh, USB uh, charger there. Um, right now I just grabbed one that I was using with my phone, uh, but I might need to put a heavier duty one that can do more amps uh, for the Pi. Um, but yeah, if you see that, that's what that means. So look at what uh, adapter you have and maybe put a heavier duty um, uh, power adapter for your Pi. Uh, so now that we have that covered, uh, that pretty much should be everything to get you up and running with the Pi. Uh, it's pretty simple. It's, it's, it takes a little while simply because it takes a little while for the Pi. Um, I will be doing a video in the in the future kind of covering some more things using, using the Pi, some different projects, using Pis um, with Parsec to play games. So it'd be pretty interesting. Uh, just imagine like the next LAN party you go to, assuming the LAN party has uh, access to outside internet and it's not, it's not completely bogged down because everybody's you know downloading updates and downloading games like crazy. Uh, assuming you have great internet connection to the next LAN party you go to, imagine uh, being able to, or instead of bringing a big desktop, you know, big mount, massive desktop or a big heavy gaming laptop, imagine walking in with your monitor and a Pi People will be looking at you crazy like, okay, so are you in the Minecraft group? <laughs> like, no, I'm going to be playing uh, PUBG. Like, and they'll be looking at you like you're crazy. But it'd be a pretty cool experience. Um, definitely cool. Uh, going to be doing a lot of uh, more testing to see how far you can really push the Pi. If it runs just as good as if you're running on my local computer, which is running an i7. And see if I really notice any difference between uh, using Parsec uh, on my i7 computer versus running on a Pi, which is a $30 computer. So uh, definitely looking forward to taking this further. Uh, if you're interested in this video, make sure you subscribe. Uh, there'll be more videos coming in cloud gaming. I also cover other things too, such as cryptocurrencies, uh, Synology NASs, uh, or cloud storage in general, uh, and all kinds of different things. So it's just 3D printing, lots of different topics. I have a lot of different hobbies that I kind of cover in, in on my channel. Uh, so if you like the, this content or the other stuff I kind of talked about, make sure you hit the subscribe button. Uh, and if you like this video, give it a big like. I greatly appreciate that, guys. Uh, and that's pretty much it for this today's video. Um, it was a, probably a little bit longer one. I'm going to try to edit down as much as I can. Uh, but there was quite a bit to cover uh, and try to condense it down as quick, good as I can while still having a, as thorough as a walkthrough as possible. So once again, guys, that's pretty much it for today's video. I hope you enjoyed it. And until next time, Zach out.